maybe you could start um, presenting yourself in a few words, your work and your name. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, my name is Mark, Mark Sebastian Eils, and um, I've been studying documentary directing at the self-organized film school Film Arche in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And that's where I also um, produced my first film, Demian, which was screened here at the Freiburger Film Forum in 2019. And now the recent project, Germany is a Trump Line, is some of a continuation of the story with uh, the same protagonist, but also with another protagonist, Romeo, and uh, juxtaposition of those two uh, stories. I would like to ask some questions about the idea. Like, you made this movie, um, Demian, but how, where did you get the idea from to reuse it or to include it in the new mu movie and to include a new person, Romeo also? After I made this 10-minute uh, film about Damien, we uh, stayed in, in touch over a period mm -hmm. of, um, yeah, I don't know, two, three years or something. Mm -hmm. But we didn't see each other again. And um, But I was still thinking, like, there are things happening in, in Damien's life or not happening in Damien's life, which I would really like to tell. And, um, yeah, then we went back, Hans and me, we went back to film with Damien. And... Um, we somehow noticed later on in the editing process that it's not possible to make the film without knowing about Damien from the first film, so it would have not worked. And especially this comparison between him back in 2017 and then two years later, I think it shows a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the weaknesses of the film is that we don't have this longer perspective for Romeo. Um, so then it would have been more balanced, maybe, and not too confusing, because it's sometimes also confusing to people who watch the film and who, um, yeah, really see the difference between the Damien from 2017 and from 2019, and even wonder whether it's the same person, um, because he really changed. Mm. Yeah, so it was basically like the main work was... Um, happening in the editing process and it took some time to figure out how to contrast those two very different mm -hmm. stories but also with some similarities um, and I think it's basically the the feeling of, of, of being stuck which we wanted to convey. Okay, so how much time did you spend there? In Cameroon, yeah. the first time? Like, um, yeah, the first and the second time? Uh, both one month. One month, okay. Yeah. And filming here in Germany, Romeo? Um, only for three days. Ah, okay. Yeah. But also like the, the one month in Cameroon, it was not filming all the time. Then we could yeah. have made like a full length film, I guess. Yeah. But um, no, no, it was just um, some days. And even like the, the first film, I, when I used to tell that at festivals, um, people were not, or people were, um, wondering that or surprised that uh, it was actually only one day filming and it was like the last day before we were going back to Germany it was like all very spontaneously and um, yeah then I had the feeling because um, later on in the editing room I had the feeling I was getting to know him more <laughs> because I was seeing him so much on the screen mm -hmm. but um, yeah then when we went back um, I had noticed somehow that, of course, this relationship is not equal because the director or the editor, they see that protagonist all over and, um, yeah, have this feeling of knowing um, the other person, but um, the protagonist is there for the shooting and then later on, of course, doesn't um, see the director, like the, the images of the director or getting to know the director. So I think this imbalance is yeah. um, is always there of course and uh, yeah I think it you you should be always cautious about that and um, yeah that's a really interesting point even for the or especially for the um, anthropological movie because I I've not thought about it obviously he, he knows or you knows you know him really really good because he's showing so private things and he's telling his stories and if you don't have a friendship when is the time for you to tell about you i mean we're of course still talking also about yeah. what i was doing and all that but um yeah I, i'm just thinking like 
as a director or as an editor, as filmmakers, like you have a lot of power in the editing mm -hmm. room to like shape the story and how you experience it. But then you also really need that trust from the protagonist who's opening up that they are being portrayed in a good way. Mm -hmm. Because of course always there are so many different films um, possible to be um, made from footage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you can edit so many different films and um, yeah. So if you say it was really spontaneously, um, did you make him questions? Like because some scenes are quite similar in between Romeo and Damian, they're showing like this, their um, papers and passport and documents from school, university. Did you ask them questions because they were talking, but it's not clear for me how it was. No, I was asking questions, um, but I was asking them spontaneously. So um, we were going to, to certain places, for example, you have also the um, scene where Romeo is um, going to that uh, football space where he was threatened by mm -hmm. a Nazi with a gun. And actually, um, from the very beginning when I met Romeo, he was so eager to tell that story mm -hmm. because he had the feeling like fighting in court doesn't really help and it wouldn't bring justice. So he um, yeah, really wanted to, to make um, his version heard. And um, so I yeah, asked him whether he would, he would show me where it happened because it's always um, like, yeah, spaces are also attached to feelings. And um, of course we were not there, but um, like returning back to, to where it happened, it, um, yeah, I think it was also better for him to, to tell that story again. Our first idea, like Hannes and my idea for Damian was actually to shoot it purely observational, okay. but that was not working because um, I think there was so much we, we couldn't show because it had already happened, so he needs to tell it, of course. And uh, yeah, there's this kind of interview also at his place um, where he's talking, where he's showing documents, pictures and all that. Um, so, but yeah, in the very beginning when we started shooting, we, were, we wanted to um, do it observational. And then there's this scene about him um, cleaning the, the, the watch. Mm -hmm. So I remember that then Hannes was actually the one telling me, just ask, ask him something, <laughs> like he was telling me. And um, yeah, then it all developed within the shooting process that um, I, I asked some questions and yeah, otherwise this film would have not worked. It, um, I mean, it was a learning process and always you, even if you have the best, um, the best concept in mind in the end when you notice it's not working out for that particular film then you have to change the concept and yeah but i imagine this process so interesting like you can change your plans and go another way and um i think it's just important what comes out um yeah that but it's an interesting point because i was asking myself about the um like why they they decided to um, tell about those things. And I also asked um, myself why or who did decide the places where to film? Um, I think it was a mixture. Of course, um, like I was having talks beforehand and um, trying to find out what would be interesting to show. Mm -hmm. And um, also having filmed the scenes with Damian already, I wanted to um, show similar scenes with Romeo. So for example, you were talking about the papers and I think papers are very um, important for both of their lives. And you have these papers, the, the certificates, the school certificates and Damian is showing them and they are, they are useless the way he's having it. It didn't help him in any way. And now you have Romeo who is showing his bachelor degree and his master's degree and still again, it's not helping him in any way to stay and then you have these other kind of papers, the passport that Damian is showing, mm -hmm. the uh, Duldungsbescheinigung, mm -hmm. uh, that official uh, paper that Romeo is showing and all these kind of papers are really determining their lives mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah that's one, one similarity I found out and I wanted to, to show so that's how for example when I knew that um, he did a bachelor and masters and ironically he he wrote his master thesis about migration and human rights. Mm -hmm. I thought that is like, yeah, very important to be in the film. 
And for example, this scene on the um, on the football um, space place, <laughs> um, yeah, that mm -hmm. one. Uh, Romeo was telling me about it mm -hmm. that um, where where it happened, like it's mm -hmm. actually not in um, exactly in Heilbronn where we film most of the time because we see him also before in the in the bus going to that um, place. It's like a smaller village where he was staying before nearby. Mm -hmm. Um, so I said, yeah, it's, um, it's important we go there, and that's what we did. Yeah, it, for me it seemed like you choose really um, personal places, like their living rooms and their homes, and I think it makes you go into more into the story. And I also wondered, or I wanted to ask about the importance of music because it's just in the beginning and in the end scene do you, you've played music. That's actually very funny because I really don't like music in the documentary mm -hmm. because music really influences you and tells you what to feel and I think it's always more powerful if you can achieve that feeling without music. So Until then, all my documentaries, they didn't have, like my short, short documentaries, they all didn't have music. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And also for that one, I was not, I, I didn't plan for music to be included. And then I was really struggling in the editing with the beginning, because I think it's the hardest part of a documentary to edit the, the beginning. The end, it was actually cl very clear from an early um, time on but the beginning was was hard and then of course again uh, fortunately Hannes was there and uh, he was telling me yeah just put some music because he's more he's more uh, or he's he's less dogmatic than me <laughs> it was in the um, in the final scene where we put the music first and then um, that was in, in one of the first versions then we only had the music in the very end And then we got the feedback, oh, where is this music coming from? Like, mm. it was not really fitting. So then we decided to um, have it also in the beginning so that people are, um, yeah, some are getting used, of, uh, used to the use of music in the, in the film. Mm -hmm. And um, the music itself was made by Niels, who was also doing the sound design. So, uh, yeah, in one of the versions... Uh, I think we also only had music, but then later on in the sound design, uh, Niels was saying like, yeah, but it's much nicer when you also have some ambient sound. Uh, so I said, yeah, let's do that. Like, when it comes to the sound, he's the one who, who did everything okay. and uh, who used, uh, like, who spent a lot of hours on, on making the sound, uh, sound nice. And uh, so, yeah, we just ended up doing it like that. What's about the title of the movie? Like, it's a um, phrase Romeo is saying in the, uh, also in the football place. No, no that's not right. Yeah, yeah, in, in Heilbronn. Yeah, right. So when you decided to use that for the title, or was it clear from the beginning? <laughs> it's very funny because it was, I think, the first working title we had. Um, of course, after, after we finished shooting, mm -hmm. um, And it was like it was like one title which came up, and then <laughs> again, Hannes and Niels they didn't like the title at all. <laughs> <laughs> so we we're really looking for a good title for uh, many weeks. And uh, for example, at one point we were thinking of something connected to these uh, papers, so something like Papiers Geduldig or something. Yeah, but also that's a bit cheesy and. Um, We, did, we just didn't come up with a nice title in the end. It was just like, okay, maybe, maybe we go back there and maybe that's the one. And um, yeah, I, I think now that it, it really fits because um, yeah, in, the, in the film, uh, Romeo talks about Heilbronn being a trampoline for him. For him. But um, I think he, um, he thinks about like jumping once and then jumping somewhere higher. That's how he, he phrases it. But um, for me, I also um, see a trampoline as something you're jumping on and you're just not mm. getting forward mm -hmm. and um, moving on. So you're yeah, somewhere like stuck as long as mm -hmm. you're jumping. Yeah. And I thought that that really fits to the situation how I met both Demian and Romeo. Um, so I was thinking it really fits to both of them. When I 
uh, first shot the film to Rome, he was um, saying it, it fits more to his story and less to Damien's story. But I think th he had this, this other metaphor in mind. And yeah, that's how that title became the final title. And because you were talking before about um, the power you have, I was asking myself how you can manage the emotions and the feelings and the strong um, informations and the sadness and yeah, how you can manage that or how you can separate your work from your emotions or if you think it's necessary to do that. I mean, of course, I would say like the film comes also out of my emotions and my perceptions during the shooting and that one I try to put in the film. But on the other hand, to that's why it's always, I think, difficult to, to edit your own film because you have been there and you know the people and it's hard to detach yourself and like take a step back. So for me, um, it was also about like not directly starting to edit, but uh, like after shooting, but to leave the material there and then after some months look at it with like fresh eyes, I would say, and look what is really there and what, which kind of film you can edit from, from that. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, with all those um, emotions and thoughts you have in, on, in your mind from the shooting, which you're bringing in the editing room. But it's difficult, yeah. I can imagine. Even like, or yeah, we're talking about those emotions. How was it for you to see um, Damian after two years again there and like with that hopelessness? I think I had, yeah, I was scared. Like mm -hmm. I was, um, he had really changed and he was not the person that I met like two years before. And um, also maybe I was angry <laughs> because in the end it's, it's all resulting from the deportation. So it's all like an, an outcome. His, li his life would have been different um, if he were not deported. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was hard to, to see him like that and um, to, to notice how this hope he had before to soon return was really, had really vanished. And the way I experienced was actually that um, he was, like, by talking to me, he was trying to, to perform and, like, to to be that hopeful person, but I, I'm not so sure whether he was believing in himself and mm. that was hard to see. Mm, that's a really interesting point because for me he seemed so tired, like also at the end you're just filming him into this bus and he's like falling asleep or I don't know, he, it seemed, he seemed so tired of everything. and. Romeo, he's now in Heilbronn, right? He is still yeah. in Heilbronn, yeah. He's still, he he's didn't, still in Heilbronn. he never went to Cameroon. Uh, a pandemic ah. happened and it uh, also changed his plans a bit. Ah, okay. But actually now what he uh, was just also uh, saying yesterday during the Q&A, um, that he is now planning to go to Senegal to um, do his PhD there mm -hmm. in philosophy. Um, and yeah, so he was telling me he will in the next weeks he'll be coming to Berlin to go to the embassy and yeah again that is a lot of paperwork and not so easy. And talking about him and the Q&A, yesterday he, um, he was there and I thought uh, like he um, talked um, a lot and I thought it was really important to give him this space. Um, how was it for you to see him like he was really angry and I thought it's good that he's angry and he was telling um, personal stories and experiences. Um, but I asked myself, how was it for you to, like you were sitting there <laughs> into the FIFO or Koki and listening to him 
with that power. But and I asked myself, was it while filming? Was it the same situation? Uh, he performed or he um, was acting. I think I have the feeling also in the film, like you can really see how he is just fed up with the whole situation, and with what which was what happened to him. And also during the Q&A, like, yeah, of course, it's very understandable. And um, when you have been really trying to um, somehow make it in this country for such a long time and it's all in vain. And even in the, in the film, you um, hear how much also his family back home has somehow invested, like when it comes to finances, even for him to come here and... Um, now he needs to go back because he's not allowed to stay anymore. So I can really understand his anger. And I think it was really important also that he expressed it yesterday. Yeah. Actually, um, I also said that yesterday. Um, he was telling me after watching the film that he had the feeling I was not radical enough. And I think he would have, um, yeah, liked the film to be, to have much more of that anger. So I think we need to come to an end, but um, I would like to know what is Damien doing now? Um, for now he's yeah, still trying to come back. And of course we see him in the film like that he needs to uh, get some paperwork done. And of course that got much more complicated because of Corona. So the embassy closed down and um, yeah, he was not able to, to go those, to those appointments. And um, unfortunately, when it comes to the situation that the film is showing, and it was filmed like end 2019, beginning of 2020, um, until now, like more than one year later, not much has changed in um, the lives of the two protagonists. So yeah, they're, they're still trying. <laughs>